So I'm going to call on Nicola Brennan to come up and introduce Gilbert, and then he will make his presentation, and then we'll have time for questions. Thanks very much, uh, Nora, and good afternoon, everyone. I think I'll just start off by saying um, thanks to Nora and, and indeed your interference over the last number of years since that committee uh, has been fantastic and I must say has contributed to, I think, a very strong direction in our international uh, development, cooperation and engagement. Um, and as Nora said, I'm the Director of Policy in, on International Development in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade and it's a great pleasure to be here this afternoon and uh, an even greater pleasure to introduce uh, the president of IFAD, the International Fund for Agriculture and Development, uh, Gilbert Wangbo. And Gilbert, we've been trying to get him here for some time, so it's taken us a while to get the dates and the times, etc., to meet. So we are really pleased to have him here for today and tomorrow. Uh, I think a number of you know he will be speaking at the annual conference of IFAD, which is the Irish Forum for Agriculture and Development, and that's tomorrow. So you're all very welcome to attend that too and tell your friends um, so you can get a chance to listen to him twice. Um, and I think we are in for an excellent conversation and a an excellent presentation and discussion with him. Uh, we've had an excellent discussion over lunch um, and has raised a lot of issues that I'm sure um, uh, President Huangbo will speak about um, in his presentation this afternoon. Um, he's a native of Togo in West Africa. Uh, he has an exceptionally uh, distinguished career, including the highest, p holding the highest political office in his country as Prime Minister for a number of years, and has been in the UN system for many years and has held a number of very influential uh, positions, including uh, in the UNDP, United Nations Development Programme, um, including in ILO, the International Labour Organization. He's not a stranger to Ireland. He was here before in 2003, he told me earlier, was his last time. So we're delighted to get him back. And hopefully it won't take 16 years to get you back again, <laughs> indeed. Um, and I should say that IFAD is a very close partner of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. We've been working with and funding IFAD for many years. Um, and it has a very strong reputation as an organisation uh, and we, we depend on independent assessments and evaluations of the organisations that we invest uh, Irish taxpayers' money in. Um, and IFAD has been identified as an agile, responsive and well-performing organisation uh, with a strategy, a structure and a model well geared uh, to deliver on its mandate. And its mandate is core to our priorities. Um, its mandate focuses uh, on uh, agricultural development, uh, particularly in least developed countries. And for Ireland, that's hugely important. And for our international development policy, that's hugely important. So there's very close alignment with the work of IFAD and our international development policy. Um, we launched a new policy um, earlier this year, A Better World, for those of you uh, who haven't heard about it or uh, haven't actually seen it yet. But that policy puts the furthest behind first at the centre, and it's our ambition as Ireland to contribute to improving the lives of the furthest behind. And IFAD and the alignment of their policies with our objectives um, will uh, ensure that we work together uh, very closely in partnership. Um, and as I said, they have a very impressive track record, IFAD has, of transforming the lives of millions of smallholder farmers in sub-Saharan Africa. And that's led us to increase our funding to IFAD uh, over the next three-year period by 25%. Um, colleagues in the room know that the Irish government uh, is very committed to reaching 0.7 um, of our GNI allocated to ODA. So there will be further opportunities for going to scale in the future. And IFAD, as a well-trusted partner, we hope to work more collaboratively with them uh, into the future. We had some talk over lunch, and I'm sure uh, President Wong will mention it, um, that IFAD is very much engaged with some of the other Rome-based uh, UN agencies in setting up um, and supporting a global summit on food systems transformation transformation in 2021. Uh, and Ireland is fully behind IFAD and the other organizations in organizing this. I think our own history of transformation in the agricultural sector, um, our agri-food business, has we have a huge role to play internationally in sharing our experiences, in learning from others, and in bringing uh, agricultural development for, forward. 
So it gives me great pleasure to call on President um, Gilbert Hugo to share with us his vision on how we can harness the power of agriculture to end hunger and poverty over the coming decade. President, thanks very much. is taking his seat there. We're, we're very glad today we have Richard Kennedy here, who's the Deputy President um, of the IFA. And so if there's any hard questions about Irish agriculture, Richard is here to answer them. We, and then we also have, don't smile there, Ray, we also have, uh, we, all, <laughs> we also have Ray, who is Head of Ireland Self, um, Self Aid. Self -aid. And uh, self help, and, and um, so we, we're delighted to have a number of people who were with us earlier on and have joined us here today. So the floor is yours now, President. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you so much. Uh, let me start by um, expressing my uh, gratitude and thank to the Institute of uh, International and uh, European Affairs for uh, inviting us uh, today. It's true that I have not been uh, in Ireland for um, 16 years as well. I've been also kind of uh, looking forward to come back uh, and allow me to, which I will come back to on, on that in terms of our cooperation with uh, Ireland. Um, um, up to um, two years ago, I think, Ireland was uh, a year, actually. Um, Ireland was uh, part of our um, executive board, which is our board of uh, um, directors. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you uh, that during our, our last replenishment, uh, which was uh, what we call IFAD 11, Ireland has been one of the champions to help us on solving a lot of critical issues, including how to allocate resources to 80 countries. So we talk about allocation of resources. I'm sure as a minister, you know very well how complicated it is. And I really want to express our thanks to, um, to you and to, to uh, international development uh, um, colleagues to, um, for that. And, uh, two weeks ago, um, the issue came back again, and people said, okay, when is Ireland coming back <laughs> on that? So I, I'm, uh, for, it's true that IFAD is not uh, quite, uh, is, um, not very, is not the most uh, um, known uh, institution in the UN system. But let me quickly remind you that it, it was created, actually, in, uh, in 77, um, um, following the... the, the the establishment of um, um, OPEC in the late 60s, uh, early 70s, and then the, uh, the, the, the oil, the crisis in terms of the food prices in this, just like what happened in 2008, we had the same um, in, in the uh, early 70s, which has led with the annual conference on, um, on food and agriculture in 76, uh, which led to the creation of IFAD in uh, 77, um, with the objective of focusing on the, the poorest of the poor. We are therefore a specialized uh, um, agencies. Our obje uh, what we do is to, um, to finance, um, to fund through a um, concessional loan, and two thirds of our portfolio are concessional loan to, um, to the rural communities. We never intervene in uh, uh, outside rural communities. But within those rural communities, we intervene both in farm and non-farm um, activities um, in what we call the transformation of the um, rural um, economies. Those of us um, that are now or are used to live in the cities, we tend to think that poverty uh, and hunger are um, urban problems. But in fact, let me recall that 80% of the world's poorest people live in rural setting. And these are the area where uh, we work. Um, I remember when I took uh, office uh, the, the, in 2017, and my first uh, um, project visiting IFAD um, project was uh, Uganda. So I have to fly for um, from Rome to Addis Ababa and Addis Ababa to Antebe, which is a very difficult flight overnight, etc. I arrive in uh, Antebe in Uganda at 6 in the morning. Then I need to take another flight for two hours. Then I need to take uh, a 4x4 four by, four mm. by road for four hours before getting to, uh, to, the, to the site. Just to tell you that we really focus in on the, the remotest uh, area, area possible. This is where we try to do um, um, our, our, our work. So it's important for us to keep in, in, uh, in mind that poverty remains really uh, with a rural, uh, a rural face. I 
As I was saying, um, Ireland uh, and uh, IFAD, our partnership goes uh, way um, in the last uh, 30, 40 uh, years, and we share a common vision, and we're again uh, going through um, your new uh, um, development policy, the, the, the better world. And I was very fascinating about, I don't know if it's here, the, uh, the expression that was used, uh, the, the 40th left, uh, left behind. Then when I read it, I was okay, it looks, this is IFAD, it's not island. <laughs> <laughs> really how the, there is an alignment of uh, our direction. Um, you know, just to, when I'm talking about the, um, the, 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 our focus, almost dogmatic focus on the poorest and the remotest area, uh, I have, my next thing would tell you is also the gender. And start even in the 90s, uh, IFAD started really kind of targeting uh, the gender uh, for obvious reason, um, and uh, since I've been in government, I, I can even confirm to you that when you invest in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, in the women, then the multiplying effects. If you don't believe in the gender cause, if you believe in the economic cause, still invest in gender uh, on, uh, on, on that. So this has been one of the things that uh, um, um, for us, um, under the guidance of our um, executive board, has been quite uh, critical. And recent uh, gender has now been, uh, um, to gender we have had the, the climate change uh, in the past uh, um, two, three re, um, uh, um, um, cycle and uh, um, nutrition. And so what you were saying during the lunchtime, it's true that maybe 20 years ago we were not talking too much about nutrition. So now we are really, um, if it is also um, catching up on nutrition. And our fourth uh, area of uh, mainstreaming um, is the youth uh, uh, dimension. So let, let we just prepare one uh, quick video just to give you um, a sense of what are we talking about. <laughs> It's tough to be a migrant. Italy was a good country, but since I was a clandestine, it was difficult. You cannot have a bank account. You cannot have work. You cannot have anything. You cannot understand the language. There is a great variety of problems at all levels. And you have to face these problems because your parents have expectations. They ask for money on any occasion. Since you're there, they think you have money. And this is often not the case. I saw that European farmers were able to make money out of agriculture. And I asked myself, why not me? Why don't I go back and put in place a small business? Now I have a lot of rice, in abundant quantities, and it's quality rice. And I've also invested in a house. I advise young people to stay, because the idea they have of migration, like the one I had myself before leaving, does not correspond with reality. Here there is land, it rains, we are young, we can stay at home, develop activities, and have a successful life. Um, as uh, you, 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 you have just heard, uh, um, Pap Samba Dian, this is his, uh, his name. Um, what we're saying here is that with the, the right investment, uh, farming can offer a pathway out of poverty and provide uh, new opportunities so that migration can stop being a necessity. Uh, migration to be what IFAD would believe to be a choice rather than um, um, a force or a necessity. Um, today, to be quite honest, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, it's true that I always see the glass uh, half, uh, half uh, full. Um, so I have great uh, conviction um, that agriculture remains an untapped treasure that holds out of promise for a brighter um, future for Africa, particularly for the, for the youth in, uh, in, in Africa. Why am I saying that? Because Africa is experiencing 
unprecedented growth, not just in the population that we all know about, but also in income. And where there is growth, there is also an increase in demand, even if the, the gains are not spread equally. So we can see that the demand from better food, for nutritious food, is also is in itself increasing. The food and beverage uh, market in sub-Saharan Africa is uh, expected to reach uh, one trillion by 2030. And by 2025, uh, Africa's population is predicted to grow by 20%. Each percentage of population growth translates directly into a percentage increase in demand for all the uh, ingredients needed for a healthy diet. Clearly, there will be new opportunities in uh, Africa for those who grow, process, and sell food. You may wonder um, why we should um, invest in agriculture when um, Africa has so many other riches. After all, let's also uh, keep uh, in mind that 74% of the world platinum is in Africa, 54% of the world diamond, and also there's an abundance of gold, uranium, oil and gas, and et cetera, we all know that. But we also know that the, um, the, those natural resources, at least so far, have not provided the answer. They have not uh, translated into sufficient improvement uh, in social well-being and stability for the um, African nations. They have not yet fed hungry children. They have not ended poverty. So for Africa, agriculture has a particular um, importance. Six out of every 10 Africans, so 60%, live in rural area. In a lot of countries, it's even up to two thirds. In sub-Saharan Africa, it's even 70% that are farmers and mainly on farm of 10 hectares or less. Agriculture contributes more than 40% of sub sahara GDP, uh, particularly when we exclude uh, South Africa. To put this in context, here in Ireland, agriculture is about, I was told, um, 4% um, of GDP. So just compare um, 4 to the 40%. Um, per se. So it's very clear that agriculture is expected to remain the biggest source of uh, income, source of jobs in Africa for um, the foreseeable um, future. Today, 60% of sub-Saharan Africa workforce is under the age of 35. And every year, we have 10 to 12 million of new graduates that enter the job market in, uh, in, 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 in Africa. So obviously this is uh, a potential um, um, blessing or it can also be um, a risk as we, 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 we know. Too often um, young people are marginalized and they are excluded from decent employment and position of uh, authority and uh, responsibility. The rural economies um, that offer a range of employment options can provide an outlet for the energy and, uh, and the creativity that we know from the youth. So investment in agriculture matters because it not only creates jobs on the farm, but it also creates employment in related activity, including trade in the cities. What will it take? for Africa agriculture to fulfill its potential? I believe mean, this is really the question. I.e., when we start talking about potential and moving to action, moving to reality. No, no, no. So I don't have the silver bullet, but I just want to share a few um, thoughts. For me, to start, Africa um, could significantly uh, increase its productivity, um, particularly by um, addressing the inequalities and the obstacles faced by the rural women. In some Sahara Africa, women make up to 50% of the agriculture labor force. Unfortunately, they also face 
gender-based uh, discriminations. Um, in uh, every region in the world, we know that women are more likely to be uh, food insecure than men, and this has been confirmed by the SOFI report, which is the, the state of food insecurity that Rome-based agency and uh, WHO UNICEF are producing. They have fewer rights um, to the land that they farm and less access to the financing and input they need to farm successfully. Simply giving women the same access to productive resources as men will increase their farm yield by an estimated 20 to 30 um, percent. And also, let's keep in mind that right now, if they, they, they constitute in sub-Saharan Africa 50 percent of the workforce, but only 15 percent when talks access to land, which is also one of the critical barriers that we are, we are facing. So there are huge gains um, to be realized by introducing better management of existing farmland. And this includes introducing the best seed, uh, seed varieties for each individual, um, in, depending on the context, and the use of the best soil and water management techniques, which include as well the, the, uh, the appropriate level of fertilizer and the eco-friendly um, pest uh, control. Another point is the irrigation intensity in Africa is the lowest in the world um, at only around 5% of cultivated land. Climate change is also already affecting the poorer communities. Reducing the quality and quantity of crops and lowering the yield um, and what we are also seeing is the um, more and more we have to deal with uh, um, crop pests and diseases and that are uh, emanating from the, um, the, the climate change. The smallholders who depend on rain-fed agriculture have been particularly hard hit with more unpredictable and severe weather condition, extreme uh, events that affect not only the harvest, but uh, the, quality, uh, the quality of the soil. So under these conditions, the resilience, building the resilience of smallholders is highly um, critical. At the same time, dependent on the, uh, diversifying the production of crops and livestock and having access to technology and renewable uh, energy so that they can grow more and safely store their harvest. If anyone today still believe that development efforts should be concentrated in cities, I would really like to recall that urbanization, which is the other challenge that we face in worldwide, particularly in Africa, that uh, urbanization comes with its own problem, including the overcrowding, the pollution, the diseases. So shifting population from the rural to the urban still not solve the problem of poverty, hunger, or inequality. At the same token, the same urbanization creates also a market for the rural produ production if we are able to increase the production in the rural, um, by the rural communities. While rural migration to cities is unavoidable, we also have to keep in mind that in sub-Saharan Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa is the only region in the world, we just published our Rural Development Report last July, um, which focused on the, on the issue of the youth. And clearly we know that Sub-Saharan Africa is the only region where the youth population is expected to grow. From 105 million in 2015 to um, around 175 um, by 2050. Globally, the economic growth model is also changing. Modern technology, particularly information technology, has transformed the way that we live and the way that we work. And that is also affecting um, the agriculture sec um, sector um, in the continent in Africa. The industries are no longer able to absorb 
all the rural people who migrate to the cities. Skilled services are a bigger component of growth uh, market than unskilled one. And at the same time, regional and global market are growing for agriculture and goods, thanks to better transport, uh, transportation, low-cost communication, and increased trade. One of the questions that we often also um, get um, is what are the, the obstacles that um, we face in, in Africa when it comes to the, um, the, transform, the transportation or the trade and related issues that I just referred to. For one thing, Africa has not developed the infrastructure needed to modernize and connect to the global market. In 2019, more than 600 million Africans still have no access to electricity. And those who do pay so high prices that is unaffordable for them. A farmer in rural northern Nigeria pays roughly 80 times 80, 80 times more for electricity than the average New Yorker. Then there are um, Africa's roads which are inadequate and badly maintained, we have to admit it, making it slow and expensive, expensive to ship goods over land. So even as rising demand for food and new market hold out the promise of higher income and livelihood for small um, farmers, poor infrastructure is a huge, huge um, barrier. And young people will not stay in a rural area that lack decent housing, education, healthcare, electricity, internet connection, and human security. This may sound um, negative, but quite frankly, it's not. At IFAD, every day we see the benefit that um, accrue through the smart and targeted investment and the advent of new technologies, um, satellite or, or solar panels. Uh, this could mean that small business can grow and thrive um, in more remote um, um, locations. We have seen in the, um, over the years um, that growth generated by agriculture is two to three times more effective in reducing poverty than growth in any other sector in Africa. Agriculture share, um, which I want to talk how this issue is now the industrial obstacle vis-a-vis -vis the, um, the ODA, the Official Development Assistance. We know that uh, agriculture share of ODA has remained flat, um, below 6% since 20, um, 2015. It is not um, very surprising that in the same period, um, the same period, the, our, the progress also has flattened on, uh, in that. So it's quite interesting. Um, I'm sure the researchers will try to see if there is any um, um, covariance or causality in, uh, in, 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 in that. Uh, yet, um, agriculture underpins so many of the sustainable development goals. Um, a child cannot learn on an empty belly. A chronically undernourished person is more vulnerable to disease and less able to contribute to the growth of the community as an adult. And without a robust uh, um, agricultural sector, we are all at, um, at risk. So to achieve the zero hunger um, SDG two, it's estimated that we need an annual investment of 115 billion, um, which is huge. Um, and so far, the total ODA is around 10, uh, 10 billion in agriculture. So that tells us about what is the gap on, on that. Traditionally, um, donors have imp an important role to play. And so do partnership with the private sector. That's the point I'm trying to make, that ODA itself cannot be the answer. With only uh, 10 years left to meet our agenda by 2030, 
um, it's quite important to get um, SDG 2, Zero Hunger, back on track. Over the next two years, it will be crucial to build political commitment and mobilize resources. Um, for this is what I believe we all had in mind, and I'm, I'm very, very, very uh, happy that the Secretary General uh, Gutierrez uh, um, is, has decided to convene the Food System Summit in uh, 2021. And I have to say that uh, to colleagues that are here that uh, Ireland has been one of the countries that has really been pushing in this uh, um, direction. So I want to express my gratitude uh, to you for, 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 for that. Um, I would like to um, leave you um, with uh, three possible um, action I believe we can take to increase the momentum of the investment in, um, in agriculture and the rural transformation. First, we need to start doing a better job of delivering the message that agriculture in Africa can be profitable. That working with smallholders is beneficial for the private sector partners, for the government alike, and that poor farmers are not, they are not looking for handouts. They are looking for economic opportunities. For African um, agriculture to meet its uh, full potential, it needs investment, not just in high productivity and profitability, but investment, um, public investment in infrastructure, in research, and in policies that result in modern and competitive value chains. I'd like to give one example. Um, in Uganda, the, not the project that I visited, um, we have another project in Uganda where the um, what we do, we, we, we provide um, financial inclusion in rural area um, targeting uh, 700,000 um, youth, women and men into a saving and credit cooperative and community. And they can use, because of that saving and credit cooperative, they can invest it, be it in farm or in non-farm um, activity in as much as it's part of the rural, um, rural economy. And, uh, and this has been um, so um, successful that uh, the Barclays Bank, uh, through the CSR, have decided to really put a lot of uh, money to um, push up the capital of this uh, um, um, system. In, in Benin, um, we have the Songhai Center um, integrating agriculture, animal husbandry, fish farming, and food processing, and, uh, and, and catering and has been doing that for um, 20 years with the concept uh, um, of uh, rien ne se perd, rien ne se crée. Nothing is lost. Everything has been um, transformed one way or the other, including the, transform, uh, the, uh, the production of, of, of gas. Um, and so we, there's a lot of uh, those projects that we are, um, IFAD is uh, really behind in financing um, to just prove that there is a hope. We really need government, we need the private sector, we need um, foundations, we need the, acad the, 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 the researchers, the academics, um, for, to, to all recognize that when smallholders are linked to markets and have access to financing, training and technology, yes, they can be bankable and they can be uh, reliable um, partners. My second um, point is the need to take a proactive uh, um, approach to risk management, particularly when it comes to climate change. This is particularly true for Africa, but climate change, of course, it affects uh, um, all of us uh, um, in the world. Um, so the, the risk management, particularly as related to the, um, the need for climate adaptation, the extreme weather condition, is one of the key things that we see as a potential um, for if you really want the agriculture to be vibrant in the, in the continent. Um, lastly, is the, we need to just make sure um, that development efforts respond to the need of the most vulnerable members in the societies. So um, I want to end with what I, I start with, the most vulnerable, um, if we really want not only to end um, hunger, um, but also to end poverty. Um, poverty. So let me therefore uh, conclude by letting you um, see for yourself. So I'm going to show you a second, uh, um, the, the, the second video. The 
different faces and the power of the rural women uh, with um, something we prepared for two projects that uh, um, we had in Nepal um, and, and in Mozambique. Everyone in the world has gone to bed one night or another with fear or pain or loss. And yet each of us has awakened, arisen, uh, somehow made our ablution, seen other human beings. And said, morning, how are you? Hey, hi, namaste. Ciao. Good morning. Hola. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust. All right. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes. Shoulders falling down like teardrops. Weakened by my soulful pride. Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. I rise. We rise.